a lot more. Ah, okay. I'm assuming there's somewhere down there to attach the harness to. Oh, that's a view. My, that's a view. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse? Oh. Second time, and I brace myself to face the winds and my fear 245 meters above the Tarn Valley. Uh. Okay. Where does this go? Oh, I feel better now. Bridge engineer Sylvester Galis explained, as I hung on for dear life, just how the concrete Y shape allows for movement of the pillars. The Y form uh, on the uh, concrete structure yeah. makes the movement easier. So the pile, if you like, is fixed to the deck. It's the deck that's in charge, and the pillar has to move with the deck as it expands and contracts. Great engineering, making concrete bendy. But discussing the concept nearly a quarter of a kilometer in the air wasn't my idea of fun. Thank you very much for explaining it to me. I'm not sure I'm so grateful to you for bringing me here to do it. We could have done this on the ground. In the roasting heat of high summer, when the massive metal road deck expands, these split piers can flex 10 times more than conventional concrete towers. Then as night falls, the bridge cools, the deck shrinks, and the giant piers return to shape. Concrete cleaving is just one inspired solution to the many exceptional challenges that the Milad Bridge engineers overcame and rightly celebrated. They wanted to build a bridge that was more than just a link between the two sides of the valley. They wanted to create a structure that rather than detract from, would add to the landscape. A sculpture in a region treasured by France for its natural beauty. And for what it's worth, if you ask me, they did it. Who would guess that to make it, they embraced the power of lightning, were guided by submarine navigation, used a chance discovery from a chemistry lab, cables prompted by accidents in a German silver mine, and were inspired by a crafty idea from ancient boat builders. The Mila Bridge, a stunning piece of engineering made with incredible style.